Okay, so we're just going to have a look at some integration today, um, some more integration even. Sorry, these videos have been quite uh, far apart. Last week was just really, really, really busy. Um, so we've done some basic bits of integration, and the very first lesson we looked at how integrations are linked to area, and we're going to look at that a little bit more today. So. On my screen here, I've got something which is uh, something that you've learnt at um, GCSE. So at GCSE, we had an idea of using trapezia or triangles and rectangles to come up with an area underneath a curve. So here's some curve here. Um, I can't remember what it is. Root x minus x squared by two or something like that. Um, and what I've done is I've drawn eight trapeziums underneath this to try and work out what the area is. Now hopefully what you can see from here is that this would be an under estimate for what the area underneath the curve is. And when I say area under the curve I mean excuse me the area between the curve and the x-axis and bounded here and here. If I zoom in especially here I can see quite quickly that this is an underestimate because my trapeziums are underneath the curve. So one thing we learned at GCSE was that if we had more trapeziums this would be a better estimate for the curve. Now I've struggled to be able to stick loads of those in straight away so instead of that I'm going to just have the same amount of trapeziums but over a smaller area. So for instance if I do this over just the interval 1 to 2. I've got H pesium still, but now I have to zoom in a really long way before I start to see that little bit of light between the curve and the trapeziums. So zoom in a lot, lot further. So this would be quite a good estimate for the area underneath the curve with 8. If I doubled this amount, that would be 16. That would be an even better area. And in fact, if I think about just dragging this down to about 1.25 or something, from here, you can't see any difference between those trapeziums and the curve. And if I zoom a long way in, it actually takes a long, long time before, oops, maybe, before I manage to find any daylight between the curve and the trapeziums. I'll just have the thumbnail on there. Okay, that's a little bit better. So, what we're trying to say is the more trapeziums, the better. And is there a limit to the amount of trapeziums we can take? Well, the answer is there is a limit to the amount we can take. It's something called literally the limit. Um, and it's basically described as an infinite amount, really, I suppose, for want of a better phrase. The way we describe this is by thinking about the heights of the trapeziums. When I say the heights of the trapeziums, I mean this distance here. So if I call this distance between each trapezium, notice that they're the same width every time, same height. Um, I'm going to call this delta x. So it's a small amount of x. And if I make that small amount of x smaller and smaller and smaller, it will estimate the area under the curve between a and b better. So in other words, the more delta, the smaller the delta x, the better. The smaller the delta x the more trapeziums I have within that, uh, within that range. So we're going to have a look at how we can uh, just uh, write this down formally. And it's really important that you understand this next, well, not understand necessarily, but remember this. And we found last year, last year's A-level paper, this came up and people hadn't really paid much attention to this to this idea it was a straightforward integration question written in a different way and lots of people didn't get the marks because they just didn't recognize it as an integration question so let's have a look at how we can do that okay so here's a, a graph similar to what we're looking at here's four trapeziums each one's got a height of delta x the graph's y equals fx this point here would be a this point here's b so, uh, one way we can think about integration is by thinking about the area, which is these trapeziums underneath the curve. 
And if I wanted to think about uh, the area and approximation for the area, I could think about these things in here. Let's call this area 1. Let's call this A2. Let's call this A3. And let's call this A4. Obviously, an approximation for the area underneath the curve would be the sum of the areas. So let's call them A1 plus A2 plus A3 plus A4. Now, this is a very general case. So, sorry, that was quite specific, the amount of, um, the amount of trapeziums we actually had. However, if, if we wanted more trapeziums, we could think of the area as the sum of, this is sigma, it just means the sum of them. So that literally means just add all of the A's you've got together. And I know I've got at least one trapezium, so I'm going to add A1. This just is a counter, so it would be I is 1, I is 2, I is 3, I is 4, etc. This would be the sum of A, AIs 1 to 4. I've got a 4 up here. This is 1, 2, 3, 4. And uh, what I'd want to do is just say how many areas I've got all together. So the way I could do that is by saying, well, what's the difference between the top value and the lowest value? So B minus A. And if I divide that by delta X, that will tell me how many strips are in there. Okay, if, that, if you're not convinced by that, um, imagine the strips are 0.5 and you go between an A's 1 and B's 5, for instance. And you should find that there's 8 strips in there, for instance. So just uh, convince yourself that if you're not sure. So the areas, roughly, the sum of these areas, depending on, how many, uh, depending on your strips, but this is a general case of finding that out. And we said that as delta X gets smaller and smaller and smaller, we get better areas. So an area is actually an approximately, sorry, let's do that again. So we can say that the area is equal to something called the limit of delta x as it goes to zero. In other words, as the area gets smaller and smaller and smaller, this doesn't mean delta x becomes zero, it means it gets as close as possible. Imagine Imagine as close as you possibly can to zero, um, the person next to you could just half that distance and that's something smaller. So you're not getting to zero, but it just gets infinitely close to zero. So if I take the limit of this sum, that gives me the exact area. And the way we write this down in not such clumsy form, is the integral of a to b fx dx. Okay, think about what the ai's are. The ai's, if you wanted to work out the area of each one of these, you'd have to use the function to get these side lengths here. So this is called a definite integral. It gives me the area underneath a curve between a and b. Um, you probably haven't done the previous exercise yet, so I'm going to show you how to write this out in a second. But this is a really, uh, really important concept, the link between this and the area underneath the curves, and the fact that you could write the area like this. Now, just a quick as aside before we go any further. Um, especially if you go into university, I I've taken a lot of liberties with how I've done this. Um, this integral here, specifically called a Riemann integral, and we wouldn't actually use trapeziums to do this. What we'd actually use is rectangles. We would do rectangles underneath. We'd also do rectangles above, and we would, as delta x gets smaller, um, those two areas would get closer and closer together. Um, so if you go on to university and you start doing analysis, um, you'll come across how to define the, this integral properly. Um, you would do something called uppers and lower sums, and they use rectangles, not trapeziums, but th this will do for where we are right now. Okay, so let's use this idea um, to work out the area underneath um, a curve. So, 
let's try the following. Okay, so if I was going to, if I was given this question here, so here's a graph, there's a shaded bit here between one and two, um, and the question was just find the area, find the shaded area. Then what we can do is use integration to help us with this. We could use trapeziums, obviously that will give us an estimate, but we know that the integral gives us an exact area. So we know that area is equal to the integral of the curve 2x minus x squared between 1 and 2. These are known as the bounds of the integral. Um, this is now a definite integral because it's definitely between these two things. If it hasn't got bounds on it, then it's called an indefinite integral. dx. And so what I do is I integrate this as I would normally. So that gives me 2x squared divided by the new power. Take away x cubed divided by the new power. And instead of putting a plus c on the end, I put this thing in square brackets then put the limits of integration on the outside. Okay, so that hasn't really given us an answer to our question, but this is the different method for doing dealing with definite integrals instead of indefinite integrals. What we do with this now is we plug 2 into this thing. So it's going to be 2 times, if I take my 2's around, 2 squared over 2, take away 2 cubed over 3. And then what we're going to do is we're going to substitute in 1 as well and take that away from our first thing. That gives us 2 times 1 squared over 2 minus 1 cubed over 3. And then what I can do is I can just evaluate these and come up with an answer. 2 squared is uh, 4 times 2 is... Oh, I'm getting these times by 2. Uh, that's 8 over 3 minus, uh, that's 1 minus a third. So if I've got 4 minus 8 thirds, well that's 12 thirds, isn't it? So it's 12 minus 8 is 4 thirds. Take away 1 minus a third is 2 thirds, which leaves me with just 2 thirds. So the area underneath the curve between 1 and 2 is 2 thirds. A quick note on what's happening here, um, because this seems a bit crazy this bit. Essentially what's happening is this first bit here tells me the area from negative infinity all the way up to 2. So the area underneath the curve all the way up to the area underneath here, the area, sorry, the area here, the area here. So it's always the area between the curve and the x-axis. So all of this area, all of this area, which would be here as well. This bit here, when I plug 1 in, that tells me all this area here all the way up to 1. So what I'm really doing here is I'm doing a difference between all the area up to 2 and all the area up to 1, which leaves me with this here. That's what's going on here. Okay, so what I'd like you to do, just for a bit of practice of this, is have a go as much of exercise 13e as you think is necessary. If you want a little bit more practice doing definite integrals, have a quick go back to exercise 13d. And I should be able to get another one of these videos done either later today or tomorrow. Thanks very much and see you again soon. Bye-bye.